Today we're driving the 2024 Nissan Leaf. The Leaf starts at just under $30,000. And this is the SV Plus trim, which is the top trim, which is about 37 grand. With a couple options, this is a little over 38,000 bucks. This does qualify for the tax credit, so at least half the tax credit, you get $3,750 back. It has a 212 mile electric driving range. It's front wheel drive, makes 214 horsepower, and it's a pretty nice electric vehicle for around town use. We've spent a lot of time in Nissan Leafs over the years, and it's actually a pretty nice EV to live with on a daily basis. Nissan has done a lot right here. Let's walk you around this. We'll talk about what it's like to drive, what it's like to live with, and uh, yeah, let's get started. We'll hop inside and start it up. So just getting inside, this isn't like some EVs where it's all screens. This is a very usable, familiar looking interior, very Nissan-like to just make this a very functional space. Lots of physical controls and buttons. We get a heated steering wheel, heated seats, auto climate control, CarPlay, it is a wired connection, um, some different drive modes and, and drive settings, and just overall a very easy car to get into and use. I have excellent visibility all around. I like this big windshield with this kind of sloping hood. Um, it's a really nice package. It's got a good amount of space too. Let's show you what the trunk looks like. Opening up this hatch, we have a really deep floor. Lots of vertical height here. And of course you can fold these seats down. I don't believe there's a spare tire. At home, on a level two charger, you can charge this leaf from zero to 100% in about 11 hours. So not too difficult to get a good charge in this overnight if you've been doing a lot of driving the day before. Nice grab handle here to lower the tailgate. Honestly, this leaf isn't very well suited to long distance driving, road trips, anything over that 212 mile range, I think would be a little bit tricky in something like this, just because the charge speeds are so slow. I'll turn this off so I can show you the charge connector here. So you can always still charge this with a Chatamo connector. They haven't updated it to the new CCS. And then uh, you've got your just standard level two charge right there. They have refreshed this Nissan Leaf somewhat recently. We get this illuminated Nissan logo, different front end. I think it's a good looking little electric vehicle. But since this generation has been out, the second generation of Nissan Leaf, you can pick these up for the mid-teens. And they make for pretty good value because they haven't really changed a whole lot since I believe when this came out, it's around 2017 or so. This Nissan Leaf features a set of 30 spoke alloy wheels. Six times five is 30. Something I haven't really seen on a car before. Pretty wild looking wheel design. Not sure if this is more fuel efficient or aerodynamically friendly, but it is definitely unique. We have a nice set of 17 inch tires here. 215 50 R17s, good amount of sidewall. These are uh, more eco-focused Michelins. They ride well, they handle nicely, and they're pretty quiet over bumps. Let's take a look in the back seat here. Fold this back up. Like we see in a lot of Nissan products, we have this rear stadium seating where you can see over the front passengers. Makes the rear seating experience a little bit more pleasant. You do sacrifice some headroom. I'm five foot 10, I have about an inch and a half above my head. This is my driving position also, and I feel pretty good back here. Ingress is a little bit tricky with this pillar right here, but uh, ultimately, once I'm back here, this is a very nice, comfortable space. No armrest, but materials feel really nice. We've got a couple charge ports too. And just looking up front, you can see how simple and functional this interior design is. It's just attractive, usable. I like all the use of physical controls and switch gear. Let's start this back up here. No front trunk. We just get some running gear up here. Fluids, 12 volt battery, some electric motor action. 
All right, I think that's a pretty decent walk around of this leaf. Let's hop up front, show you around the front seat just a little bit more, and then we'll go for a drive. So we've got some buttons over here to the left. You can control your gauge cluster brightness, open up your charge port, turn on your steering assist with cruise control, heated steering wheel, and then your charge timer, you can turn that off with a button right there. All of your climate control buttons and switch gear are very nicely separated here. You can control your temperature. You'll see that displayed on the screen. Turn on heat, AC. Honestly, you just leave this on auto, set your temperature, and it's good to go. We've got heated seats right here. The low setting is very nice and pleasant to live with. Pretty much just left on in the cold. No wireless charging, but we do get a nice little slot to put our phone right here. We have a couple different pedal modes in this. So you can one pedal drive this Nissan Leaf. That, if you turn e-pedal on, that's one pedal driving. If you turn it off, it's just two pedal driving like a normal car, like you're used to with your internal combustion engine vehicles. We've got a reverse and 360 camera here. Pretty good view, kind of distorted, kind of a smaller screen, but it works. MOD is moving object detection. So that'll beep if it senses a car driving behind you. The standard Nissan infotainment is pretty simple on its own. It's kind of laggy and slow, but you don't really need to use it for anything. I guess you could use the native navigation if you want to, but chances are you're gonna be connecting to CarPlay or Android Auto, and that is pretty responsive and quick and pretty seamless this week. No issues, no connection problems. Uh, it's all worked quite well. Parking brake right here, down next to the shifter, a little bit of storage. Here's what your glove box looks like. Place to put your sunglasses up here. Nice big visors. They slide. This opens. Okay, let's go for a drive. We got this kind of rotating ball shifter here. That's kind of neat. So we're going to start this drive with E pedal off. We're going to be using the brake pedal. This is a very interesting brake pedal. It's the bounciest brake pedal I have ever used. It has a very unique springy feel to it. It doesn't really feel like a traditional brake pedal. Uh, it's kind of odd. With E-Pedal off, it feels pretty natural to use. No major complaints. Uh, it's not the, the best braking feel, but it feels like it has good initial bite. It gives you some confidence going into corners a little bit hot. But with E-Pedal mode on, it's tough to gauge how much pedal pressure you need and it can be a little bit disconcerting going into corners a little bit too fast sometimes. So it's something you have to kind of be aware of. I do really like this one pedal drive system. It's very well calibrated. It blends off nicely uh, from cruise control. It's, it's just really well tuned and it has a good amount of deceleration to bring you down from speed. So I've actually mostly been driving this Nissan Leaf with e-pedal turned on. This Leaf is also surprisingly quick. 214 horsepower all the time at zero RPM. It's front wheel drive, so it does struggle putting its traction down sometimes out of corners, especially in the wet. But there's not a ton of torque steer. And overall, it's a pretty nice electric vehicle to drive. A little bit of a <laughs> traction control light flashing there. It's quiet at speed. Suspension rides very comfortably. There's not a lot of noise over bumps. I kind of have a slightly higher driving position in here too. These seats are very comfortable. Of course, probably Nissan zero gravity seats like they put in a lot of their models. This is not necessarily a sporty car to drive at all. The focus here is on comfort and efficiency. It just feels like a normal car that happens to be electric, which is, I think, probably my favorite thing about the Nissan Leaf. Cruise control, very easy to engage, change following distance, turn on your steering assist. We'll try that out in a little bit on the highway. Easy to cancel.
Let's test out the brakes. No one's behind us. A little zero to 60 here. It's decently quick. here. Not too bad. You can't hustle this thing. I think the tires are a little bit too squishy and the suspension a little bit too soft for super spirited driving, but ultimately it can be fun to drive, but it's not necessarily an electric vehicle that goads you on and encourages you to push it around corners. I'd say among most vehicles, handling is pretty average for a modern car. Among most electric vehicles, it's probably a little bit below average. Sporty driving definitely wasn't the focus here. Let's bring us down from speed here with one pedal driving. We're going to let off the accelerator pretty late and let this do all the deceleration for us. And you can see it slows us down pretty well. This is a much better tuned one pedal drive system than we see in a lot of, a lot of other electric vehicles, honestly. Nissan really did a good job calibrating this. I also like that when you do engage cruise control, and let's say you want to cancel it or disable it for a second. It doesn't immediately throw you into the steering wheel. It gradually blends off, giving you deceleration at kind of a linear rate, which is really nice. So you can engage cruise control, disengage it, resume your accelerator pedal with your right foot, and it's just all very seamless and comfortable. There's a general softness to the driving character, the controls, the weights of everything in this Nissan Leaf. It's actually kind of luxurious, if I'm being honest. Not a ton of steering feel, but better than some. Let's make our way towards the highway take this up to a little bit higher speeds. You guys can hear tire, road, wind noise. One thing I do like about the Nissan Leaf is it doesn't feel like a bargain basement Econo box. It feels like it's built with a little bit more quality than some of the competition in this class. It's just a little bit nicer to drive than some of the competition. Everything in here feels pretty well bolted together. No shakes or rattles. done this before, but while we're just cruising here, let's do a quick sound system test. Volume and track selection controls right here on the steering wheel. impressed with the sound system. Alright, let's see how this handles. Take it a little bit gingerly around these corners because it's wet. I think really the biggest thing holding this Nissan Leaf back around a corner 
are the eco-focused tires. But for what this car is and what it's what it needs to be, those actually make a lot of sense. All right, so 75 miles an hour here on the highway. Let's turn on steering assist here for a second. This seems to work pretty well. It's a better system than some. It keeps you pretty well centered between the lines. You do need to keep your hands on the steering wheel for it to continue. Adaptive cruise control has worked great this week. Maintains a pretty close following distance at the nearest setting. You have one of three different distance control settings there. Steering assist is struggling a little bit around this corner here, but luckily it's easy to enable or disable with this button right here. Nissan's really doing a good job with their in-cabin ergonomics. Everything here is visible from the eye, nothing's blocked by the steering wheel, everything is within reach. Pretty good power at highway speeds too. Again, 214 horsepower all the time is actually pretty good. You don't have to wait for a turbo to spool, you don't have to wait to get into high RPMs, it's just there. Honestly, as a daily driver, an electric vehicle is kind of hard to beat, unless if you're doing tons of miles every day, and as long as you have a place to charge it at home, overnight, once, twice, three times a week. Nice thing about an EV is you don't have to plug it in every day like you would a plug-in hybrid or something like that. You never have to visit a fuel station. Maintenance on electric vehicles is very minimal. And as a vehicle to live with, it's very comfortable, very relaxing. It's so quiet, it's peaceful. There's something nice about not having an engine vibrating around in front of you. And the alternative would probably be a rough, gruff four-cylinder with a CVT, and this is just so much nicer. Ultimately, I feel like the Nissan LEAF is kind of old news at this point, especially with the new Nissan Aria and so many other electric vehicles coming out with better range, better charge tech. But ultimately, it's a pretty good electric vehicle, despite some of its couple of shortcomings. If you can get over the fact that you can't really fast charge this or take it on long trips, as an around town daily, it's fantastic. works well in the winter. Battery management tech seems to be pretty well done. We're pretty well tuned. The, um, the nice thing about the one pedal driving is that you get pretty good one pedal driving deceleration right off the bat, even when the battery is cold. A lot of EVs, it takes forever for that battery to warm up and for you to get a good amount of deceleration with one pedal driving. That's not the case here. It's a no-nonsense EV, and I think a pretty compelling option if you're looking to get a second-hand electric vehicle. Getting something like this for $15,000, $20,000 second-hand might be a pretty good option in today's market, especially with seeing a lot of depreciation from EVs uh, in the first year or two. Or if you want to get one brand new, the tax credit is probably still going to be available for the 2024 year, and you can go that route too. So anyway, guys, those are some thoughts on the Nissan LEAF. Probably not a good only car, but a very nice second vehicle and uh, a really nice vehicle to live with. All right, that's going to be it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.